take a seat in just a couple minutes. My name is Brian Hall. I'm the faculty chair of the Internationalization Initiative here at PCC. I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for coming. How many people were here uh, a year ago for our original uh, event that was held on, I think, a Friday night? How many? All right. Um, Um, I would like to thank the filming crew, English and World Languages, for their constant support, the Sylvania Diversity Fund, the Internationalization Initiative, and the Asian Studies. They all uh, contributed in many ways to help bring this event about. And um, right now I'd like to introduce the person who really is responsible for bringing this event, Takako Yamaguchi. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I think uh, Brian is especially kind for lowering the microphone just for me, I think. Okay. Hi. Ohayou Hi. Hi. Uh, nice to see bright uh, faces this morning. And thank you for all of you who gave us the uh, presentation, Puni Lude 2, in a CC mall this morning. So much of those uh, students' uh, presentations will be repeated uh, between now and noon. And uh, would you like to, Reverend, um, stand for us, please? I'm sorry to ask you. Um, this is our special guest speaker today, Reverend uh, Gregory Gibbs of Oregon Buddhist Temple in Portland. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> and uh, also, Carol, can you free one hand? Is that, am I saying it right? Wonderful. Thank you for bringing our youngest students on campus to join us. Thank you. Okay. And at this time, I would like to introduce Dave Stout. Dr. Stout, uh, Dean of Division of World Languages, English and World Languages. <laughs> okay. Would you like to say a few words to the students? Okay. So today's theme is tsunami one year from and commemorating victims of tsunami. And then also the second part of our theme, of course, is sending a huge message from PCC, uh, our care, and then also a new hope for Japan and people. Okay, so um, at this time, how about everyone who are involved with song practice? Would you like to come and sing first? There's a number, big number of you. Okay, so I'm welcoming you to the stage, please. Thank you. Don't be shy. I think you are more singers. Uh, oh, oh, look, I don't even need my stand. <laughs> All right, this first song we're going to be singing is Sakura Sakura. It's a traditional Japanese folk song, and I hope you guys enjoy. Ready?
Sakura Ume Momo. This is an original song, I believe, and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to let them introduce. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Kalwa, and um, I was the one who wrote these. And um, the first one was translated by uh, Shota, who isn't here today. And the second one was translated by Azusa, and I'll let her tell you. <laughs> I'm Azusa, and I'm a ISO student. 
I have been here for a month. Thank you. Embers and sparks, with every flap of molten wing, burst into living flame. Though all is now chaos, from destruction we will rise. White cap tsunami, ruined houses float away with the ebbing tide. Would you like to raise your hand one more time? You just arrived in Portland one month ago, is that right? Welcome to PCC, our level four ESOL student. Thank you. And then at this time, the next poetry reading, uh, Andrew. Andrew, do I see you? Okay, perfect. So Andrew, supported by Yoko-san, onegaishimasu. And while they are getting up here, um, in between our poetry reading and song, dance, and piano, and flute, okay, so uh, please enjoy food. Uh, let's see. Not quite. Okay, we are talking to each other. So, uh, how about at this time, I would like to introduce my long-time colleagues and newly onboard colleagues of Japanese department, Kamoshita Sensei. Kamoshita Sensei, would you raise your hand? How about uh, Yamanochi Sensei, are you still here? She had to go teach, I think. How about Chiho Murphy Sensei, are you here? Chiho Sensei, oh, they're back there. Chiho Sensei and Kamoshita Sensei, one more time. Uh, these are the wonderful colleagues, and I know you are in their classes as well. Thank you for coming, and thank you for your support. Would you like to play flute after this group? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Andrew and Yoko-san team. Thank you. Hello, I'm, um, I'm Andrew. I'm a first year Japanese student. Um, today, uh, Yoko and I will be reciting a, an excerpt from a song called Go Mad and Mark by a band called Envy from Japan. Um, I won't really go into explaining the reason why you can kind of take the meaning as it, as it is, but um, I'll start with the English and then Yoko will, will translate. <clears throat> Staring with farewell, then comes the time the promise expects. At the end of the earth, I found I could not turn back. Staring with farewell, then comes the time that the promise expects. Someday, someday. This feeling goes on endlessly. I obtained it after a total transformation. The map comes back into a faded color. I tear it and I stray. The past, tomorrow, the future, it's all repaired. It goes on, an intense growl. It goes on, stop, eternally, calm, stop. Reach ahead, stir and reach. Mark today, go mad and mark. さよならから始まる時がある。約束を待つ時が来る。地の果てで知った。私は後戻りできないということ。さよならから始まる時がある。約束を待つ時が来る。いつか、いつか。この思いはどこまでも続く。変わり果て、色褪せて戻ってきた
Erika Sana, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, behind the scenes, there were uh, three or four different translators. So, Wiru san, uh, what was the name of your translator? Can you shout out? Okay, Maki san, is she here? Okay, would you raise your hand to be recognized? You are a translator for Wiru san, arigato. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Shota could not be here, but. He's also behind the scenes translator. Tomo san was on campus until 10 p.m. last night trying to help one of the students' translations. So uh, behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that's been happening. Please come in, newly joining groups. I believe that maybe uh, my colleague in history, Sylvia Gray, is class student. So please come in and enjoy food and company. Uh, and Erica, are you, are you ready? Yan, and this is I am a first year student at Japanese and my major is education. And is that what you want? <laughs> okay. Student uh, performer or presenter, uh, I am going to um, let you introduce yourself. But you're in ESOL level five. And when did you come to Oregon? Six months ago, she arrived in Oregon and she's in ESOL level five. And would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. Uh I cannot speak English well, so I speak. I will speak Japanese. Minasan, konnichiwa. Atashi wa Jiwan to moshimasu. Atashi wa Kankoku jin no hito nan desu ga. Atashi wa Nihon de kou nen kan shinda kota ga arimasu. Sore de kyou nen tsunami ga atte. Sore de atashi wa motto kanashiku kanjimashita. Sore de Kankoku no hito mo tonari no. 隣の国が日本なんで、それで韓国人も一緒に悲しんであげました。それで私はこれからピアノを弾くんですけど、早く日本日本人が頑張ってほしいです。Uh, first year and second year students, Japanese language students, did you catch some of the words that you were saying? Are you alright? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, where is her original place? Shushin wa doko desu ka? Nihon or Kankoku? Kankoku. So, Jiwan is from Korea and she's sending uh, lots of love and cheer. Good cheer for Japan and Japanese people. Thank you for playing piano, Jiwan.
Friendship uh, piano. Okay, and uh, newcomers, uh, visitors, please come in and have a seat. There's some food behind you as well. Please grab food. And at uh, this time, I believe uh, I'm going to take a pause. And as you find your seat, seats, please go ahead. And food. Uh, let's see. Wiru san not quite yet, right? Okay. Gerardo san, are you here? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, before I introduce a uh, couple more student presenters, um, I would like to have uh, our main guest speaker, Reverend Gibbs, would you please? Yes. Thank you for coming. May I introduce to you our main speaker today, Reverend Gibbs of Oregon Buddhist Temple. And uh, I am going to speak with him for a few minutes, but or one moment, but uh, may I also introduce to you two special guests uh, standing right there, <laughs> we have not offered you a seat yet. Uh, Frank uh, Spangler Sacho, so uh, president and CEO of Tokai Carbon in Hillsboro, Tokai Carbon USA, and then also um, his uh, executive assistant, uh, Ms. Akiko Kondo. Thank you for coming. They will be our future events and activity for Japanese program and world languages at PCC Slovenia. Thank you for your support. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm so pleased to be here. I want to thank uh, Yamaguchi Sensei for inviting me. And I'm going to do uh, three bits of liturgy. I, I was a, mentioned that I was your speaker. I'm really a presenter. I'm not going to speak much, but uh, I'll do one bit of liturgy right now, and then another bit of liturgy and a uh, formal reading of a pastoral letter at a later juncture. So what I'm going to do now is called Shishinrai, and the two pieces of liturgy I'll chant are actually in Tang Dynasty Chinese. Japanese Buddhism has always continued to use uh, Chinese as the educated language of the continent. And so for formal purposes, we still use uh, Chinese. And this piece called Shishinrai literally is relying on the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. But as you may know, Buddhism is rather uh, liberal, non-dogmatic, and flexible. And so we really see this as simply expressing our grounding in reality and expressing our hope that the victims of the earthquake and tsunami in Japan and also the survivors will be deeply grounded in reality as they continue to move out of that darkness and into greater light. Again, this will be called Shishin Rai. <coughs> Hi, my name is Will, and I'm a first year student in uh, Yamaguchi Sensei's class. Uh, this is a poem that I wrote and was translated by uh, my good friend Maki Yoshinaga, who's in the back, um, and will be recited by Kyoko san. Hi, my name is Kyoko. I'm just a volunteer to help a Japanese class. Thank you. <clears throat> Devastation swept over the land and lives of your innocent people. No one deserves the experience that you endured. But the acts of Mother Nature were fierce and indiscriminate. Through blood, sweat, and tears, you remained graceful and strong. The world prays and shares pride as you heal and repair. Thank you. So you're going to share your article you found. Thank you. Boku no name wa Rido des. Ninen mai kara Nihongo benkyo shite mas. My name is Gerald Reed. 
and uh, I'm a second year student in Japanese and my major is, or I'm going for a electronic engineering technician or perhaps a civil engineering, I'm not sure yet. Um, but I wanted to share this article that has important messages on uh, work ethic, following your deeply held convictions, and the will to go above and beyond. It's from the Mainichi Japan newspaper, March 19th, 2012. It's titled, Onagawa Nuke Plant Saved from Tsunami by One Man's Strength, Determination. It's by Takao Yamada, expert senior writer. <clears throat> While the town of Onagawa Migai Pre Prefecture was hit hard by the March 2011 tsunami, the nuclear plant shares with the equally devastated city of Ishinomaki survived. The reason it did so, I discovered in a March 7th article in the to Tokyo Shimbun newspaper, is mostly down to the personal strength and tenacity of one Yanosuke Hirai, who passed away in 1986. There is a lot for us to learn from the one episode involving Hirai, especially now as stress tests on idle nuclear reactors are conducted and general atmosphere of public distrust. To us, to help us understand Hirai's contribution, mm -hmm. I turn to 82-year-old Tatsuji Yoshima, who worked under Hirai at Onagawa plant operator Tohoku Electric Power Company. According to Oshima, Hirai's true value as a person was in his sense of duty, duty that made him take responsibility as a result of his decisions. He wasn't the sort to believe that anything would be, everything would be all right as long as people keep to set standards. Rather, though he paid careful attention to regulations, compliance was never his goal. Hirai was the kind of manager and engineer to exceed regulations and do double checks needed to get the heart, to the heart of a problem. The breakwater that proved so inadequate to the task of protecting the Fukushima number one nuclear plant from the ocean was 10 meters high. The one defending the Onigawa nuclear plant was 14.8 meters tall. And it turns out Hirai had to fight a one-man war to get it built. The reason he was so determined was his careful study of the past, which revealed that in the year 869, a massive tsunami had hit the spot where the Onigawa plant now stands. Hirai was born in 1902 in the town of Hunooka, now Shibata, southern Miyagi Prefecture. He studied civil engineering at Tokyo Imperial University, the present-day University of Tokyo. And after he got a job at the Toho Denryuku Power Company, owned by then the king of electricity, or of electric power, Yasuzemon Matsunaga. He went on to work for Japanese, for Japan Electric Generation and Transmission Company, and after World War II, Tohoku Electric, where he eventually became vice president. After, learning, after leaving the firm in 1962, Hirai became head of technology research at the Central Research Institute of the Electric Power Industry, CRIEPI, founded by his mentor, Matsunaga. In 1968, he joined the coastal facilities founded by, the, his, founded by a planning committee for the construction of the Onagawa nuclear plant, and he poured his efforts into protecting the new reactors for, from tsunami damage. Hirai was apparently the only person in the entire project to push for the 14.8 meter breakwater, while his colleagues said that 12 meters would be sufficient, and he derided Hirai's proposal as excessive. Hirai's authority and drive, however, eventually prevailed, and Tohoku Electric spent the extra money to build the 14.8 meters tall shield. Some 40 years later, on March 11, 2011, a 13-meter high tsunami slammed into the coast at Okinawa, Onagawa. Another of Hirai's proposals also helped save the plant during the disaster. Expecting the seawater to draw back before a tsunami, he made sure the plant's cooling system was designed so it could still draw water for the reactors. The tsunami that Hirai anticipated came over 25 years after his death and he can say, and we can say that he, he was absolutely right. What made him so implacable and gave him such a strong sense of re responsibility? Corporate ethics and compliance may be similar, but their cores are different, says Oshima from his home in Sendai. For the pers from the perspective of corporate social responsibility, we cannot say that there is no re need to question a company's actions just because they are not under a crime of law. In 1965, the then Crown Prince and now Emperor Akihito took a tour of CRIEPI 
and a photo of His Highness in the tour guide, Harai, hangs on the wall of the Matsunaga Memorial Office. I went to have a look at it myself, and in Harai's straight-lipped expression, I could see his determination. Apparently, appropriately, his posthumous Buddhist name translates roughly to piercing truth. Oshima yet, Oshima provides yet another enlightening anecdote about Harai. Just after the disaster last year, he got a phone call from his, boss's, his former boss's family. Harai's youngest daughter, <coughs> Harai's youngest daughter apparently told Oshima, I saw my father in a dream. He said, tell Oshima, I said all the time, that the electric industry should not get involved with nuclear power. Hirai had helped make nuclear power a reality in Japan, and he was already scaling back his duties before the first reactors were built. Oshima can't remember Harai ever turning against nuclear power, making his daughter's dream all more puzzling. What Oshima learned from Harai was, rather, to improve the quality of nuclear generation, nuclear power generation. Hundreds of people would now stand as one to tell Harai that such a thing is very difficult indeed, but I will need to leave the subject alone for now. Reactors at Kansai Electric Company, Oi Nuclear Plant in Hukui Prefecture have passed government mandated stress tests, and the firm is now seeking the official go-ahead to restart them. A final decision by Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda and the cabinet ministers concerned is likely within a month, and they are apparently calling for the local residents to approve the move. However, at its core, the nuclear reactor restart issue is not a political one. Is there anyone with the experts, with any expert with the same insight, powers, and persuasion of spirit as Harai advising and supporting the Prime Minister now? That is what I would like to know. That's it. And I think just recently there still working on whether they're going to restart it, so it's a current issue, but that's it. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you again for inviting me. And what I'm going to do now, as I mentioned, I have one more piece of uh, liturgy to chant, and I'm going to do a uh, formal reading of a letter. As I do that, I'm going to just kind of stand to the side here so that anyone who wishes to offer incense may. This is a Pan-Asian way of expressing concern and respect. And so if any of you wish to, this is the more modern Japanese way of offering incense. The older way, of course, is standing up sticks of incense. That was when all our shrines were open air. Almost all Japanese Buddhist temples are closed, and so we came up with a way that generates a little less uh, smoke. I have a charcoal there, sometimes they're burning incense sticks. But you just drop the granulated incense over the charcoal. If you wish to do this, if anyone wishes to do this while I'm chanting, please go ahead. Um, again, I'm going to first uh, chant a piece called Songbujo, literally meaning to invite Amida Buddha, the Buddha of limitless wisdom light and endless life into the room. Uh, encouraging Shakyamuni Buddha, the founder of our tradition, and encouraging awoken persons, enlightened persons from all directions to be with us. But again, our actual feeling about this is even more broad. It, it's an acknowledging of the positive influences in the background of our lives, the positive influences we hope are flowing into the lives of the victims of the earthquake and the tsunami and the survivors. And after I finish that, I'll read the letter, I'll first read in English, so you will get the meaning and then close by reading in Japanese, the only thing I'll actually do in Japanese, reading the letter on the white ashes in Japanese. And the thrust of this letter is to caution us that life is brief. But looked at it in context, we're being told 500 years ago when Ren Yoshonin wrote this letter that you might only have 100 years. So it's not saying you're gonna get hit by a car today. It means if you have the full run of your life, which should be about 100 years, it's still not enough time. It's a human problem. It's a problem with the human condition. Even if we have 100 years, we can't do everything we wished we could do in this life. The second message, besides life being brief, is that life is precious. 
uh, Buddhists do not believe this is a veil of tears. We believe that this world is nirvana. It's just my ignorance that keeps me from seeing the beauty and goodness of this life thoroughly. So we're also encouraged to appreciate this life and the good things in this life. And the third message in that pastoral letter is that for everyone, there will be a new life at the end of this biological life, that biological death is not the absolute end for any of us. So this is the thrust of the letter um, and the thrust of the liturgy that I'll share to, again in Ch Tang Dynasty clerical Chinese is to encourage the positive influences that are in this world to flow into our lives and to flow into the lives of the victims and the survivors of the earthquake and tsunami of last year. So again, as I ring the bell and start the chanting, anyone who wishes to come forward and offer incense here, please do. No. Anyone who wishes to, please continue to go forward and offer incense, uh, drop the granulated incense over the burning charcoal, showing our respect and concern for our friends in Japan. I will read this uh, pastoral letter first in English translation, a translation by a fellow Oregonian, uh, Reverend Dr. Titus Uno of uh, Eugene, and then I will close my portion of the program by reading the same letter from the original Japanese. Renya Shonin's letter on the white ashes. As we deeply observe the transient form of human life, we realize that in this world, from the beginning to the end, what is momentary and passing is the illusory course of human life. Thus, we have not heard of anyone receiving human form which lasts for 10,000 years. The course of life ebbs very rapidly. Can a person preserve his or her body for 100 years under the present conditions? Not knowing whether death will come today or tomorrow, those who depart before us are as countless as the drops of dew. Therefore, in the morning, we may have radiant health, and in the evening, we may be white ashes. When the winds of uncertainty strike, our eyes are closed. When the last breath leaves our body, the healthy color of the face is transformed, and we lose the appearance of radiant life. 
Our loved ones may gather round and lament, but lamentation is to no avail. When such an event occurs, the body is sent into an open field and cremated, leaving only the white ashes. What a sad plight. Thus we see that what humans cannot control is the passing away of the young and the old alike. Therefore, we should all look to our future life and with deep reliance in Amida Buddha, repeat his holy name. Again, if I could summarize the thrust of the letter, life is brief, even if you have 100 years. Don't fail to appreciate it. We're not in a hurry to get to the pure land. We're not in a hurry to go to some better place. It's, it's here now, if we could just see it thoroughly. And nonetheless, for those of us who do not awaken in this life, the moment of death can be the moment of all dreams come true. It can be entering into this world fully in an awakened fashion. I will then read that letter, the Hakotsu no Sho, um, from the uh, Japanese text. <clears throat> uh, if anyone is not yet and wishes to offer incense, please continue to come forward. Hakotsu no Sho. Sore, ningen no husho naru so o tsura tsura. Kanzuru ni oyoso hakanaki mono wa kono yo no shichu ju maburoshi no gotoku naru. Ichigo nori. Sareba imada manzai no ninji no uketari toyu koto ki kazu isho sugi ya sushi imani itate tareka kyokunen no gyotai o tamotun beki ya ware ya saki hito ya saki kyoto mo shirazu azu tomo. Shirazu, okore saki daku hito wa moto no shizuku sue no tsuyu yore mo shige shito ieri tareba shita ni wa hogan ate yube ni wa hakoto nareru minari sure ni mujo no kaze kitari nureba Sunoachi hutat no manako tachi machi ni toji hitot no eki nagaku tae mureba kogan mrashku henjite tori no yoso oyo ushinai nuru toki wa rokushin kenzoku atsuma ate nageki konashi me domo Tarani sono kai aru bekanazu. Sate shimo aru beki koto nara neba atote. Yagai ni okute. Yoano kimurito nashi hate nureba. Tara hakot nomizo no kore di. Aware to you mo naka naka. Orokanari Tareba Ningen no Haka Naki Koto wa Rosho Fujo no Sakai Nareba Tare no Hitomo Hayaku Gosho no Ichidaiji o Kokoro ni Kakete Amira Butto Fukaku Tonomi Mara Asete Nembutten Mosu Thank you very much.